here we are. Uh, everybody was wondering, with this little bipartisan you know, warmth uh, around the budget deal before the beginning of the year, would any of that carry over into the new year on any other issue? And it looks like it has on the farm bill because the House passed it, bipartisan vote. Yesterday, the Senate took its procedural vote. Are we going to be able to vote on this? 72 to 22, they said yes, and the final vote could come as early as today. Uh, tell us about this bill. Does it have anything good in it? Well, uh, the mo- the biggest part of this bill is food stamps. And this bill only cuts food stamps by about 1%. It will reduce benefits for maybe 800,000 people by about $90 a month. Um, but that is a much smaller cut than all the others that had been under discussion for the past several years. So uh, a lot of liberals and Democrats are happy about it. Not all are, because why cut food stamps at all? At all. That's, that would be my position, uh, my but it, vote. It, it's right. such a small amount, uh, and, and the annual spending of the program fluctuates so much, it's, it's almost like nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can explain how the cut works if you want me to, but it's a little complicated. Uh, please don't, then. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> but if it's, if 90, it seems to me, if you're on food stamps... 90 bucks a month is a, I mean, that's one big grocery order for sure. Right? Oh, it's like I mean, three big grocery orders. Yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's significant I mean, it's, for the people who well, will be affected by it. It's just that such a vast population is served by the program. Uh, in proportion, it doesn't seem like such a big cut, especially considering the constant letters to the editor and stories about people in front of you in line who yeah. were buying soda with food stamps and it made you really mad. This is something that people like, for instance, the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, very influential yes. liberal think tank, can say, well, uh, we shore up public support for this program by oh. being able to say, it, you know, it's it's taken a, a modest cut. Mm-hmm. The belt, it's tightening its belt. It's, right. a, it's at the kitchen table making the sacrifices Sharing the sacrifice, uh, and the the originally House Republicans wanted thirty or forty. Billion. They wanted forty billion over 40 ten years. Billion. That would have been a five percent annual cut, and it would yeah. have uh, kicked about four million people off the program. That's a big number, right? Compared to what we're talking so, about, so everything is relative compared to what they really want to do. This is a victory. What about getting rid of some of the subsidies in the um, uh, in in the whole agricultural business? Well, that's why we are. We have such a warm and fuzzy and cuddly bipartisan <laughs> scenario because the bill throws money at big agribusinesses. Still does, right? Yeah. Th- yeah. That's never been the controversial part of this. Only the food stamps was controversial. The need to lavish money on profitable industry has never been controversial. What, what it does is there are a variety of programs that support farms. And one of them had been direct payments. And this, this is the, contra- the most controversial one where people were getting paid even if they weren't even farmers or even if they didn't grow anything. Uh, and it was about $5 billion a year. They're getting rid of that completely. But instead of just getting rid of it, they're taking a lot of the savings and plowing it in to crop insurance, which is, is really just a little bit uh, more market-oriented seeming. Uh, but it's still a subsidy going to huge companies that may not really need it. Uh, I've seen that phrase, crop insurance, uh, not being a farmer myself. But but, what, but to me, it means is um, you. it sort of takes the risk or the gamble out of farming, right? I mean, there's the, the always... government helps you buy insurance uh, in case there's bad weather or a right. wild market fluctuation that makes your... Uh, crop completely unprofitable. But is it, isn't it sort of the nature of the business, even if you're planting your little vegetable garden in your backyard? You may have a good year for tomatoes. You may not, right? Well, I that's mean, supposed to be the nature of business may, in general, right? I, I thought so, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's always been so, – th- this is important. It's our food. Uh, but I believe it is, it's much less true than it used to be that there's uh, – that, that Farms are going to go belly up because of this. More and more farming is done by these huge, huge agribusinesses. It's just, not so much the small family operation that it might have once been. Yeah. I mean, it just seems to me, 
I, 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 well, I, I don't know how far you can go with this program, but like, look at the drought in California. I mean, I've seen so many stories. This is people are really, really being hurt by this. But is this the gov- Can the government insure against every crop loss? Uh, well, the one thing to keep in mind is that even though we're we're talking about, you know, I'm saying things like we're lavishing money. It's still. Uh, much smaller part of this overall legislation than the food stamps piece. That really is that, the majority that of is this. That is the biggest piece of it. Okay. One other issue that uh, the president, you, but that you've been writing about, and the president was was meeting, had some meetings at the White House on last week, is the long-term jobless people. These are the ones who lost their benefits, right, uh, at the at the beginning of the year because yeah. Congress did not act and still hasn't acted to extend unemployment insurance for them. What what's what can the president do about that, and what's he trying to do? Well, the, well, most long-term unemployed don't get anything. Uh, there are four million people who are out of work six months or longer. About a million of them, uh, fewer than two million, actually got benefits. But that program ended because Congress didn't renew federal unemployment insurance. So President Obama has followed through on something he talked about last year, uh, which was that he, I'm going to pressure CEOs not to discriminate against the long-term unemployed. And this is a problem that uh, we've seen anecdotally, and then there have been a lot of research papers where people have tried to figure out what happens if you send out thousands of resumes and some of them show that a person hasn't been working for the past few months. And if you have a gap in your resume like that, the research has shown you're just not going to get a call it's back. A, it's a stigma, right? They'll Ju- say, oh, yeah. he's been out of work for six months. There's something wrong here, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so you can imagine how that becomes a self-perpetuating problem, and then right. it leads to people losing confidence and uh, you know being unable to perform as well, perhaps, in interviews. But they don't lose their job skills. Uh, when I interview people in this position, it's you know they lose their nerve eventually, and that's a, a separate issue. But incredibly, I'm sure, they lose, I'm sure they lose hope. Right. So Obama's just saying, uh, let's not do this, and he got all these 300 companies to sign a pledge saying we won't do this. We'll review our recruiting practices. We'll share uh, tips on how to hire from the long-term unemployed with other companies. And these people were these CEOs came to the White House on Friday. And a show of support for this. In, uh, Rupert Murdoch wasn't there, but his company is one of the ones that thinks this is a fine thing to do. Is is there any? Is it too soon to know whether this is going to work? Whether there's going to be any follow through? I mean, these guys. I'm sure. Uh, you, you come to the to the White House, you sit down in the Roosevelt Room with the president, and you say all the right things. But do they follow through? Uh, I, there's no way to force them to. Uh, even if they did follow through. I, it's not something that's going to cure the problem of long-term unemployment. I mean, how many jobs, how many new jobs are created every month? Right. It's in the the low hundreds of thousands, and we're talking about millions of people. Uh, but it, it'll ha- it, it should probably help some people. It can't hurt is one important thing about it. Uh, but I, there's there's no penalty. They don't have to prove they're doing it. It's really all about the bully pulpit, raising awareness of the problem. Some people might just not have ever thought about it. Right. Uh, and there's just a, it's inertia for no reason. So it's, it's something he can do without Congress, without an executive order even, just to draw attention to the problem. Uh, yeah. And a good thing for him to do is sort of a subtle, so, subtle form of discrimination, which some of them may not even realize was taking place within their companies when they were looking through resumes. And they just throw those aside because they've been out of work too long. Right? That's just, yeah, it's not always even subtle. I mean, there have been a lot of job ads where it say must be currently employed. Oh, really? And I, there was bad press over that in 2010. And you go on Craigslist, you don't see that so much anymore. But it's like you said, it's subtle. It's internal. Uh, and there, it's not even necessarily written down. Like, don't mm-hmm. look at these people, HR team. Uh, but they might happen to do that.